So guys, we have this 320 project coming up. You know what the hell we're doing? Should we just go on YouTube and find some videos? Can't hurt. Maybe it'll work. Welcome to Geosciences 320. My name is Mike Kappas. I'm going to be your tour guide guiding you through the Little Ice Age and Medieval Warm Period. We're going to be asking some big questions on why the Earth warmed and then cooled again. So I'm going to hop on my bike and get on this. The Little Ice Age and Medieval Warm Period were temperature anomalies that occurred during the past millennium of Earth's climate. However, these warm and cool times were not felt on a global scale. While it was cold in Europe and North America during the Little Ice Age, it was warm in the Middle East and isolated parts of the United States. Same goes for the Middle Eastern Warm Period. While it was warm in the North Atlantic and Eurasian Arctic, it was cool in the South Atlantic and Central Eurasia. Past studies have shown that for the Little Ice Age, solar forcings played a major role in cooling along with some effects from large volcanic eruptions. The medieval warm period occurred during a long duration positive Arctic oscillation, North Atlantic oscillation event, which caused slight warming of the climate. Even though we call these events warm periods and ice ages, the temperature differences between then and today isn't all that big. During the Little Ice Age, temperatures fell approximately one degree Celsius. And during the medieval warm period, temperatures rose by only a few tenths of a degree. Today, we are seeing temperatures rise almost as much as one degree Celsius, which is much greater than the medieval warm period. That was a pretty good video. Should we check out this next one? Yeah, it looks like a good one. Sure. Hey, you groovy cats. Welcome up ahead to the Geosciences 320 70 show. Featuring bell bottoms, platform boots, and most importantly, the Little Ice Age and Medieval Warm Period. What's that? Ever heard of the Little Ice Age or Medieval Warm Period? Well, sit down and watch this trippy vid. The medieval warm period was seen as a time during the European Middle Ages about 950 to 1250 AD that was characterized by a warm climatic anomaly. During this time, the Vikings were able to colonize Greenland. Normally, the waters of the North Atlantic were impassable due to the large amounts of ice, but due to the high temperatures, the majority of the ice melted, which allowed the Vikings' ships to pass through. During the medieval warm period, there was a strong warming trend in the northern Pacific but cooling in the tropical Pacific, and this is consistent with the La Nina-like pattern. La Nina is represented with strong cooling in the east and warming in the west. By analysis of this data and trends, it is believed that the medieval warm period was not a global event and was mainly due to the effects of La Nina and a positive North Atlantic oscillation. The Little Ice Age corresponds with a decrease in the solar irradiance, the modern minimum, which occurred during the mid-1600s to the early 1700s. Reduced solar irradiance during the modern minimum increased upper stratospheric ozone, which in turn decreases the lower stratospheric ozone. This causes a shift towards the low index of the Arctic Oscillation, North Atlantic Oscillation, or AONAO. A low AONAO index slows down middle and high latitude westerlies, this diminished flow creates cold land, warm ocean surface patterns, with cooling over large areas of North America and Eurasia. These results provide evidence that relatively small solar forcings may play a significant role in century-scale northern hemisphere winter climate anomalies. Well, that video was pretty good. What about uh, this one right here? Well, hi there. Welcome to GSI 320. I'll be talking to you about volcanic forces. You're probably wondering why I'm in this bathtub. Well, you can think of these little ducks as volcanic aerosols. What the? The Little Ice Age occurred approximately between the years 1400 to 1700 AD. 
A model of this period by Schindel et al. compares solar irradiance and the effects of large volcanic eruptions on climate. Volcanic aerosols from eruptions were shown to have a large effect on rapid short-term cooling, but a much smaller effect on long-term cooling. This figure shows the duration of aerosols in the atmosphere from recent eruptions used in their model. Large volcanic eruptions inject volcanic aerosols like sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere. This sulfur dioxide interacts with atmospheric water vapor to create sulfuric acid. This sulfuric acid reflects more of the sun's energy, increasing the Earth's albedo. However, due to the short-term nature of the aerosol's effect, it is suggested that solar forcings played a larger role in long-term cooling. Well, I certainly learned a lot about the Little Ice Age and the Middle War period. I did as well. Yes, we did, didn't we, boys? The more you know! Welcome to Geosciences 320. My name is Mike Kappas, and I'm going to be guiding you through... No, shit! Tour guide. Tour guide. No, no, you can just, just go again. Welcome to Geosciences 320. My name is Mike Kappas, and I'm going to be <laughs> your tour guide. Damn it, woman, get out of here! <laughs> Stay with her for a little bit. No, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> no.